Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of the Bunny Zion BZ Cast. I am your host, Randy. Uh, this is officially episode 20 of the Bunny Zion BZ Cast. Again, this is the official podcast of BunnyZion.com. That's of course everyone's favorite website, favorite bunny theme website to get your uh, bunny e magazine. Um, that's also right around the corner. I'm recording this on April 30th, 2016. Um, again, guys, we're just a day away from a new issue. By the time you guys hear this uh, podcast recording, a new issue will be out May 1st. Um, can't wait. It's you know the biggest day of the month for Bunny Zine. Um, please uh, subscribe to the uh, e-magazine to the website so you can get the link for the e-magazine emailed right to you um, our social media pages for Bunny Zine and just in case you don't know or if you're just tuning into the podcast for the first time thank you for listening uh, on Facebook we're just Bunny Zine on Instagram we're official Bunny Zine and then on Twitter we're at official Zine. Um, this podcast uh, you can find on YouTube.com, on SoundCloud.com, on iTunes Podcast, and on Stitcher, Stitcher Radio. Um, that's brand new. We just got on Stitcher a couple of weeks ago. I'm excited for that. Um, apparently, there's another one. <laughs> All these platforms are now hosting podcasts now. Google Play has its own, is either started their own podcast format or something like that i'll have to look into it but that's a future possibility as well um stitcher was actually very easy to set up so i'm assuming google play won't be that you know much more difficult um again uh, a new issue right around the corner uh for the month of may for bunny zine um there's a lot also going on 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 our facebook page if you which is just bunny zine on facebook uh make sure you like us uh, so you can keep up with updates about Bunny Zion, about the podcast, about the e-magazines. Um, there's a lot of little stuff going on. Um, there was stuff going on with the abandoned family where, you know, they were raising money. There was uh, the Chronicles of the Were-Rabbit uh, 2 book. Uh, there was like a, don- it was like a funds raising thing. And you get the book for donating a certain amount of money, uh, like a Kindle edition. Um, you know, the digital Kindle copy to your uh you know kindle kindle fire whatever they're called now um some of the talking points on today's show i do have a guest um can't wait to uh, talk to her about her uh just up and coming organization that's going to be very awesome for bunnies um and then the end of the show i'll talk about um i took i was gone for five days in north carolina some of uh you guys know on twitter i wasn't really talking about it at all on facebook but i was updating some of our uh twitter friends that i was at north carolina for a few days i'll talk about that uh we got some bunny zion birthdays this month uh we'll talk about the watership down news and then uh, a couple of other things towards the end of the show again that uh intro music for the second episode in a row uh in a row was uh, Silly Fun by Kevin McLeod off uh, Incontech.com. Um, I'm going to try some different outro music today. Same uh, artist, same website, but some different outro, outro music. That, that would be pretty cool. Um, so recently, maybe in the last month or so, I came across uh, a Twitter account that is a company, the up-and-coming company that's uh, starting up um, and 10% of their profits go to help out bunnies and like res- nonprofit rescues and shelters. And I said, that's, that's awesome. Uh, we should definitely have someone as a representative of them on. Um, they are the Bam Bam and Pepper Shop. Um, it's, uh, I'll let my guests do the, all the explaining of their awesome organization. And I'm bringing her in right now. Hello, Ava. How yeah, you doing? Hi. Thank you for having me. Oh, no problem. Thanks for coming on to the show. Um, I always I always try to promote the people like in the rescues, in the shelters, and the people that just like go outside of, out, out of their way to, you know, do something that may, yeah, it, it, you know, it's a business, but you're also helping out bunnies and, you know, people, uh, helping people help bunnies, which is awesome. So the name of the place is Bam Bam and Pepper Shop. If you could just give us some details um about about the company okay so basically we're a clothing company that has a 
logo, and it's my two rabbits, Bam Bam and Pepper. And um, it started as, like, me and a group of friends. We go to Happy Hour, which I know they have um, Happy Hours and variations of it kind of across the United States. Mm-hmm. But it's put on, it's put on by the um, Minnesota Rabbit Companion Society, and they're in partners with the Humane Society, and they just donate um, to, like, help house rabbits and, like, feed them because it costs a lot. Okay. That's, no, that's... And so, um... Go ahead. Oh, okay. Uh, so, basically, I decided that it would be a good idea to make something where if you, like, wear it, you feel good about promoting something that's helping rabbits. Oh, that's awesome. So, uh, you talked about the shirts, and, um, what is for, uh, your guys' Twitter, that which has been, uh, very cool and active with other, uh, you know, bunny people on Twitter. What's uh, your guys' Twitter handle again? Um, I think it is Bam Bam underscore Pepper is the shop. Okay. And you guys have, uh, dem- you know, showed off some of the shirts that you guys are uh, selling. Um, we talked off the, <laughs> before the show, I think through the Twitter messages about um, you guys might be look- doing looking into doing other clothes, like types of clothes, like uh, hats or scarves or something. Yeah, we're looking to expand somewhere down the road so there'd be more items to, like, buy. Okay. Um, and we also talked about uh, that there isn't a website up yet, but it's in the works. Like, to my audience, these guys are really, really brand new. So this is, a, I think, a really cool, uh, like, introduction for you guys to hopefully, you know, get you guys going. Um, is there – you said – off the air that you guys were aiming towards the end of May. Um, is there a particular, I know you maybe you don't want to say the actual website, but um, is there one that you're aiming to, to get? Um, I think we're aiming to get something like the Bam Bam and Supper Shop, something like that. Um, but we haven't fully decided yet. Okay. So people should stay tuned for the, you know, your activity on uh, Twitter and so forth on uh, on updates for that, correct? Yeah, and then once we get the website up, we are having a giveaway going on where it's like you retweet about our shirt, so you tell us like what color is your favorite. We're going to be picking someone um, the week the website goes up, so we'll be um, updating that on Twitter. Awesome. I also agree with the happy hour. There's uh, the lo- one of our lo- local rescues. Um, I, I f- tweeted about it and Facebooked about it last month when I attended one and uh, Bunnies United Network. That's uh, Illinois HRS chapter. Um, and it was a lot of fun. A lot of bunnies, a lot of people, and a lot of interaction. And it was just a really, really fun time. Uh, I definitely, you know, I advise other people to at least give it a try. It's a blast. Yeah, it's like, oh my god, my rabbits, they love it so much. They, like, know the moment we're going, they're very excited. Aww. And um, it's just a great way for them to interact with other bunnies. Yeah. Yeah, it's a really, really fun time. I know some people are uh, kind of hesitate to do it because they're not sure about, you know, every bunny, every bunny, literally, every bunny is a little different. You got a little different character, and, but... Uh, even if they're not super social, they could still have a good time with the toys and other stuff going on there. Um, so you guys were, were talking about the website. You guys are literally just starting. Um, and you guys are showing off the shirts on Twitter. Is it? Are you guys going with staying online? Or are you going with maybe thinking about stores, store locations in the you know Minnesota area down the line? For now, we're just going to be online, but um, maybe down the road when we grow with a big audience, we'll probably try and open a store kind of in the Twin City area. Okay. Oh, that's awesome. That's really, really cool. Um, <coughs> so um, for you guys, uh, is it, so Ava, is it you and someone else both running the shop or is it? Um, yes, it's me, uh, my friend. Quinn and my other friend Kelly and we all kind of like talked about it and we thought it'd be a great idea and then kind of recently we just decided well let's just 
go for it and do it because it's a really good idea and I think it's going to help a lot of rabbits. That's awesome. Um, is there, do you guys have a plan for, like, because you said 10% of the profits are going to go, um, go to uh, the rescues and shelters, the nonprofit ones with, with bunnies. Is there, like, a certain way that you guys have them, like, picked out, like, which ones? Um, for now, we're just going to focus on the Minnesota Companion Rabbit Society, but um, we are going to start choosing other um, rescues kind of across the country. Them. I think later down the road we'll try and pick like a, a charity of the month to give to or a rescue of the month to give to. Awesome. It's uh, it's actually a lot like Bunny's and We feature uh, a rescue every month with with our issue. They get like uh, a paragraph, a couple, of, uh, not more than a paragraph, paragraph, like three or four paragraphs um, and a page of our e-magazine and then a link to, you know, donate if people can donate. And uh, I, I definitely advise people to donate because it's the re- all the rescues need it across the country need it. Yeah, it's like it's definitely a lot of people who don't have rabbits, and I talk to them. They're just like, well, "Why do you have a rabbit? Why does it cost so much? Why is it such a big deal?" And I don't think they really understand the true extent, like how to care for a rabbit and what they need. Oh yeah, I've had that conversation with a lot of other <laughs> a lot of my other guests on the show about that. Mostly people that work like within rescues, but uh, yeah, we've had that we've had that conversation a lot. Um, So I I have to believe that Bam Bam and Pepper uh, have to be pretty awesome bunnies and pretty inspirational. You guys you guys got to tell us a little bit about them. Okay, so I had been asking my parents for years, like ever since I was a little kid. I was like, "Can I get a rabbit?" And they were like, "No." And so finally, when I turned 18, they were like, well, you're old enough now, you can do that. So about two years ago, I got my first rabbit, um, Bam Bam, and she's a Hoto dwarf. And when we first got her, we didn't really, like, know any background story because the Humane Society just kind of knew her gender and, like, what breed she was. There wasn't, like, much else. So over time, we kind of found out that she's going to, she sort of went blind in one of her eyes, and Aww. she just, like, you know, she wanted to protect herself, so she was a little aggressive about that, but she's totally sweet. Like, I don't think she would really truthfully try and hurt anyone. It's just that she's kind of like, don't touch me, I can't see you. Aw. But um, then we decided to get another rabbit, and her name's Pepper, and she's a lion head Dutch mix. Cool. And... She seemed very shy when I first got her, and I didn't know, like, she was going to like the other rabbit, but they bonded quite well. There wasn't really any fighting except kind of the first week of bonding. And now they just, they love to be, like, around the house, and they can't, like, be separated from each other. They go crazy. It's so cute. Aw. I can't, I can't get my two to bond at all. (laughs) Uh... They, they, I get, I get sniffing, and that's about it. You, and then someone gets like aggravated, and then yeah, they're in, they're in their own bedrooms. Uh, but uh, yeah, but that's awesome though. That's that's really cool. Um, I totally dig it. I can't wait till like everything kind of, you know, expands for you guys to see how this all works out. Um, like I said, I, yeah. com- I completely support it. I've had uh, a guest or I have a, I've had a guest on who's written a book and um, I'm drawing a blank on the novel, but I know it's a well known one and all of her funds go towards like her foster rabbits. So I it, I really think it's really cool noble cause. While at the same time you guys are also you know financially helping yourselves out as well, um, which is also important. Yeah. Um, so, uh, is there other social media pages for, let's say, the people that are not on Twitter? Are you guys, like, Facebook, Instagram, any of that? Uh, we currently don't have a Facebook one for the shop or Instagram one for the shop. We do have an Instagram just for the rabbits, and we'll be talking about the shop that comes out on Instagram, and it's just bam bam underscore and underscore pepper. Awesome. Well, make, make sure you guys give them a follow on Instagram and Twitter. Uh, to stay up to date with the shop. Um, 
And again, I I recommend heading over, hop, hopping, how about that? Hopping over to their Twitter and, uh, and giving their t-shirts out. You know, they're nice. They're nice t-shirts with the logo on it. Uh, different color selections are really cool. Um, was there any, I know this is a little shorter than usual, but was there anything else that you wanted to add about uh, the Bam Bam and Pepper Shop? Um, yeah, I guess I'll add a little bit more. Um, so basically the Bam Bam and Pepper Shop, it's like, it's a very well-loved company. And when we're going to send out our packages, we've developed an idea that we would send out um, just a card giving about like facts about rabbits and stuff that people wouldn't normally know about rabbits. And so when you get it, you kind of get a little information. And we're hoping that each item will be a different fact that everyone will get. So, I don't know. It's still kind of in the development, like, work in progress stage. Okay. I like that idea, though. Uh, I like people staying, you know, staying in the know about what's going on with bunnies. Um, and you can't, you can never have too much knowledge about them. <laughs> Um, yeah, and that's important. It's very important uh, that um, someone getting a fact, you know, let's say they adopt their first bunny and they're kind of learning on the fly because admittedly, admittedly, a lot of us kind of go through that of kind of learning on the fly um, rather than looking into it before we actually adopt them. Um, you know, someone could get that fact, you know, check out your, your website when it's up and see that fact and say hey you know this is something learned you know something new that i learned um yeah which is which is cool that could be you know very or just you know a, a little fact that someone didn't know and go hmm i learned something new today <laughs> yeah and it's definitely like you know some people i've talked to um that i know they get rabbits for easter which definitely i think if you're not really planned for that it sort of bugs me but, like, they say, oh, yeah, I had to return it. It was, like, so much work, and I didn't know they needed to do this and that. And I'm just like, well, why didn't you look into it? Like, it seemed like a spur-of-the-moment idea, and I think it's like adopting a kid or any other pet. You really shouldn't do it, like, spur-of-the-moment. You should kind of really think about it. And if you do, you should, like, get a book to read up on the pet that you're getting. Yeah. Yeah, no, we've – we all of, like, like February and March um, – I've had di multiple guests on. I had a guest with Make Mine Chocolate. I had a guest with uh, Not Just for Easter. So we were we were <laughs> selling um, the whole campaign about adopting ra rabbits as Easter gifts. Uh, the whole well, multiple campaigns in our e magazines and in our podcast episodes. So we I I know where you're coming from. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, and how frustrating that can be. Um, like I, I say it all the time. I've mostly been saying that a lot the last couple of months is that the, the local shelter by me, uh, Red Door Shelter, has cats, dogs, and bunnies, and I think maybe birds and hamsters and stuff. They actually have a count of... Oh, wow. It starts at Easter, and then it goes up to the next Easter. It stops, like, the, the next Easter of uh, abandoned uh, rabbits, like, found out in the streets. Um, and before this past Easter, I think it was like 84 or 85. So, oh my God. yeah. And they leave that number out there. They do. They, they leave that number out there. And I think that's very important for people to kind of say, oh, wow, that's, that's a lot. You know, it's like when you, when you click their page, it's like right in your face. It's a uh, red door animal shelter. Other uh, people do a good job. They do a very good job of community, you know, communicating, they get a team of people out to a certain location where this obvious not wild rabbit has been spotted to bring him in, you know, get him taken care of, um, you know, yeah. medi medically taken care of, and then they're available for adoption. So they do a great job. I always bring them up because I think I see them a lot just because they're a local rescue of mine within an hour of me. And uh, they like I said, they just do that, that, that numbers count. And I think that's really important. That can really tell people, oh, wow, that's a, that's a lot. Maybe why are people abandoning rabbits? And then at least get people to like look into it to see what, why are yeah. they doing this? Why are they giving up on them? And that's how like, 
our donations, we really just want to help the rescues and nonprofit organizations kind of get that message out there and say, like, well, you really should, like, it's a big deal. And I think, like, yeah, I know some people make fun of rabbit owners and go, well, it's not big of a deal. And I'm like, well, it truthfully kind of is when you think about it. Yeah, definitely is. It definitely is. <coughs> Sorry about that. Um, well, that was a lot of information that you did tell us about it, that you told us um, about the social media, uh, about, geez, I can't talk, about your company, Bam Bam and Pepper Shop. Uh, one more time on that Twitter uh, uh, for all of our Twitter friends and people just to check out more information about you guys. Okay, so it's Bam Bam underscore Pepper, and there are two different Twitter accounts. There's one where it's just kind of pictures of them, and I think even in that bio, it will link to the shop, and I think that one is just either at Bam Bam Pepper or Bam Bam and Pepper. So basically, if you just search Bam Bam and Pepper, I think they'll come up. Awesome. Well, Eva, thank you for coming on to the show. Um, I'm <laughs> I don't know if it was kind of I didn't I was hoping it wasn't it wouldn't be this short, but you did tell us a lot of information. Um, like like you said, there's or like I've been saying, you guys are still like starting up, but uh, you yeah. got yeah, but that's completely fine. I can't wait to see this company grow and then you know see some see you guys start selling some shirts and helping bunnies out. Well, thank you, Ava, for coming on. Um, and again, you should see this in a couple of days. Everyone should see this. Uh, today's the thirtieth, so maybe like the fourth, third or fourth. Okay. Well, thanks for having me. Thank you for coming on, Ava. It was a really good uh, time talking to you, and I can't wait to uh, to watch Bam Bam Pepper Shop develop and grow. Oh yeah, yeah, that should be fun. We're hoping to get everything going hopefully just by like june for sure awesome and uh like i said everyone stay tuned to the bam bam and pepper shop on twitter for updates on their website and they're showing off their awesome shirts and ava thank you for coming on and you take care all right you too bye 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 uh, that was, again, Ava with uh, Bam Bam and Pepper Shop. Uh, I'd like to thank her for coming on. Um, I know that's it was a little shorter than usual, but, again, she gave us a lot of information, and there isn't that much to expand on when the, the company is just starting up. But, again, um, I'm hoping that you guys will listen. When you listen to her talk about the uh, their organization and what they're trying to do, of course, they're trying to start up their own business, but they're also – uh, you know, have a morally obligated, <laughs> they, they feel morally obligated to help out bunnies and, and rescues and shelters with 10% of their profits, which is awesome. That's something they don't have to do, that they're going out of their way to do it. Um, they could if they wanted, and it would be completely fine as well to sell shirts without giving profits to rescues and shelters. Um, but they're doing it, and that's awesome. Um, so again, stay tuned to their Twitter account, which is uh, at Bam Bam and Pepper Shop. Uh, there might be like an underscore in there. Like, like uh, Ava said, just search Bam Bam and Pepper on Twitter and you'll find them. Um, and they'll update it. Um, again, they're working on their website and they're working on um, expanding as far as clothing, you know, other clothing outside of T-shirts. Um, and like I said, if you head over to their Twitter timeline, you you could check out some of the shirts. They have pictures of some of the shirts that they're going to do. Um, that's really cool that they're also going to be doing like little facts about bunnies that come in with the shirts and other gifts. So again, one more time, I'll say it. Uh, Bam Bam and Pepper Shop on Twitter. Check them out. Give them a follow if you're on Twitter. Um, so uh, going with the last little segment of the show, I was in uh, North Carolina for five days between uh when did that come back I don't, I don't even know the dates uh late april and i i was gone for five days in april i was talking to some of, the, uh, of our friends on twitter just updating them saying hey i landed safely and uh it's going great it was uh beautiful weather out there um uh, just relaxing time for my wife and i to take a little trip away a uh, very quick flight from illinois which was nice not too much trouble 
Um, I looked into a couple of... I should have done more research into a couple of rescues. Um, well, to see if more rescues were close to me. I was in the Charlotte area. I wasn't in downtown Charlotte, but I was just like maybe 20 minutes out of downtown Charlotte, North Carolina. Um, again, t to my... Not again, but to my... Uh, friends and bunny uh, bunny pages and bunny friends out in north carolina you guys have a beautiful state it was a very fun time uh the people working in stores and working at shops were very friendly and polite um and it was a really good time <laughs> despite everything that's going on in north carolina politically i'm not gonna dive into that because it, it, it's not it, this is not the right platform to dive into that whole situation um but that's not the people, the residents of North Carolina, that's not their fault. That's the people, you know, political people above them. Um, if you don't know what I'm talking about, look up the, uh, who is it? I don't know. There's like artists and companies threaten not to do things in North Carolina due to uh, the transgender bathroom issues and, or bathrooms and stuff. And, just Google that and you'll see what I'm talking about. I, again, I'm not going to use this platform to talk about that. Um, it's a very fun time. I should have, what I was going to say like a minute ago is I was going to, I should have researched more rescues um, that might have been in the area. Because when I was doing it at home, I was getting stuff that was like two or three hours away uh, from where we were staying. And then when we got there... I didn't realize that we would be so close to downtown Charlotte. Um, I know my wife said Charlotte, but I didn't like when we were looking at it on the GPS map. I wasn't, it didn't like, you didn't see the city right there. Um, so I would assume that there would have been rescues or shelters with rabbits. I would have liked to pay a visit, you know, talk to a couple people, maybe done an interview for bunny sign or something. But again, that's my own fault for not <laughs> doing any deeper research when I got there. Um, you know, when you're like doing North Carolina, there's a little bit of mountains and a little bit of, uh, you know, it's a hilly area. So cell phone connection can kind of go in and out a little bit, unless you're in an area with Wi-Fi. Um, <coughs> but, um, so I didn't get to do that much research of looking into it when we got there. And then also when we got there, we were, we had like, you know, Things that we had like a set list of things to do um, that we wanted to do while we were out there. It was a very fun time. Uh, we went so. Uh, do, 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 do. Sorry, I'm drawing a blank. Oh, we have two birthdays in the month of May uh, that I know so far. So anyone on the Bunnies and Development team, I'm sorry if I'm missing you. Uh, uh, I know Dustin has one coming up in the middle of the month, and then mine is at the end of at the end of May, literally the end of May, the 31st, um, I'll be 27. Uh, yeah, I know that I'm like I'm teetering towards 30. I got a few years towards 30. So no making fun of me. <laughs> um, so that's really cool. It's, uh, I think Dustin last year was four. I think he had 40 on the dot yesterday. Sorry, Dustin. I didn't want to bring up your age. <laughs> uh, so he might be turning 41. Um, which is pretty cool. Um, while I was out there, uh, the big news, uh, well, there was more than one just big news, uh, depending on if you like wrestling or not, but the big news of Prince passing away, um, I mean, what an icon, what a shocker. Um, I saw that someone texted me about it and then it exploded all over Twitter um, people didn't, um, it, it was crazy. It was one of those things where it wasn't confirmed. Um, you know, like someone had died in Prince's house and then like minutes later, you know, they think it might be Prince. And then minutes later it's Prince again. That's how Twitter kind of broke it down. Um, uh, like TMZ or something. Um, so that's really sad and shocking news. A guy, while I never like went out of my way to link to listen to Prince's music, I completely, completely um, understand his legacy and his impact that he had on the music world. Um, I know this isn't bunny related, but uh, 
<laughs> and his inspiration that he had for a ton of other artists. I watched a lot of artists interviews when I used to watch like MTV and VH1 back in the day and on YouTube. And they all at one time or another brought up Prince as like part of an inspiration for their, for their music, for their art. So again, this is a little, <laughs> it's kind of stupid to say this is old news, but it, it's like five or six days old, whatever, whatever it is. But it's it's sad news. It's shocking to the industry, and his legacy lives on forever within art, other artists. Um, the other one was I won't get too deep into it because it's a little no, it's a stupid thing to say. But it, it's mostly based on if you're a wrestling fan. If you were a if you at least watched wrestling in the late '90s and the early 2000s, uh, the female wrestler China passed away. Um, the age of 46 and I believe going back to Prince, I think he was 57. Um, I was, I still am. I'm still someone who watches it. I, I again, it has nothing to do with bunny. So I'm not going to talk about it in the show, but that was really shocking. It's becoming more of a shockingly common thing in the business of wrestling. Uh, whether people mess around with drugs or other, uh, steroids or other things or just kind of, you know, fall in the dark holes um, you know, metaphorically speaking, uh, she, yeah, she was 46. She was having problems. Uh, I'm not going to talk about her past. You could just Google that for yourself. Um, and with everything that went on with her life, but I was a fan. I'm, I watched her in the late nineties. China was a big wrestler, like kicking the crap out of big men, which was fun to watch. Um, she was, uh, you know, pioneer for people that are listening to this, the wrestling fans, you already get what I'm saying, but she was a pioneer uh, for the women in the business today. So again, for Prince, for China, uh, very sad news about their passing. While I was out there, I was completely shocked while I was out there to see that. Again, I know it's not directly, uh, you know, bunny related stuff, but the next one is, it's also very sad um, that, I saw over Facebook again. Um, it was, I think, it was a morning while I was out in North Carolina. Was uh, the passing of the disabled bunny Susie, little you know the white bunny with their um, from with their I don't I don't know how what how, what the disability was labeled with their legs, but uh, she was adorable. She was very sweet. Uh, we had her in an e magazine issue uh, within the last. I can't remember. I'm I'm starting to lose track of <laughs> of when we had bunnies. And, re and rescues and, and when we had them. Um, I, I remember us having them. I just can't remember the dates or the months anymore. I'm starting to lose track of them. Um, but she was very sweet and adorable. And I saw the news and um, the community on Facebook, the bunny community on Facebook, um, share their condolences and, you know, very rightfully upset and sad. Um, so my condolences go out to the family of Susie and the people that were taking care of her. Um, I have to say when I was out in North Carolina, the one thing I was concerned about was the bunnies at home, just because uh, there wasn't going to be anyone always at the house. There was going to be someone checking like two or three times a day on them to make sure they had food, water, um, and you know, their litter boxes and were cleaned and garbage was taken out. But, uh, you know, check the mail and other random, you know, regular house stuff. Um, but I was still kind of concerned just because you never know if something bad happened. You know, if someone wasn't going to be there. I guess you could say the same thing. Like if I'm at work, my wife and I are both at work and something bad happens. We're both not there when it happens. But it's always a concern, especially when it's like five days. You know, it's not like you're going to work for ten, you know, eight, ten hours. Then you come home and, you know, they're going to be there, you know. Being gone for five straight days is a little, uh, <laughs> I was a little paranoid. You know, I was, I was, uh, I had a friend, uh, who, who made extra, uh, check-ins to make sure that they were, uh, okay. Just randomly stopped by and hung out with them. I made sure he had a house key to check on them. Um, I was going to post it out on, on something on Facebook and Twitter about it, about like leaving your bunnies at home when taking vacations or road trips, but um, I didn't want to get that too deep into it. Um, you always have the go. You always have the option of going with uh, a place that will hold them up, like a rescue or a shelter. But 
um, you know, momentarily. But I, I don't know. The money is is always a pain when it comes to that, as it usually is with bunnies. Um, and I did trust the people that were coming over. Um, if anything happened, they had phone numbers to call vet or the 24 hour emergency uh, hospital for exotic animals uh, to call them or possibly bring them if there is an emergency. Um, I, I, that's my only one word of advice in that situation is to at least make sure if you have someone watching your bunnies for you, that's not always there. Again, you know, they're just popping in and out to make sure that they're, you know, happy, healthy, and they have food and water um, to at least leave emergency situation, whether it's a vet or emergency hospital um, to make sure if they know something that's off, um, then they can call someone for advice, especially if you yourself can't be reached. That happens a lot. Um, again, guys, I'm closing it out very soon. Uh, there's a new issue right around the corner. May 1st, by the time you guys are listening to this, it will already be out. So hop over to our Facebook page. It will be the pinned post on our Facebook page. It will also be the pinned post on our Twitter page. Again, on uh, social media pages, Bunny Zion on Facebook, Official Bunny Zion on Instagram, and at Official B Zine, uh, B-Z-I-N-E. <laughs> I know I, I kind of say it differently than everyone else. I've been told that a lot. Um so official design on Twitter. Um, I'm really excited to see it. I can't wait to see it. Um, please subscribe. If you have accounts on any of the platforms, please subscribe to the podcast. Um, uh, YouTube.com, um, on SoundCloud.com, iTunes, um, iTunes, po- you know, in the podcast section of iTunes, and then Stitcher Radio. Just search Bunny Zine BZ Cast. That's Bunny Zine BZ, the word cast. Uh, search that in any one of those platforms subscribe and download it helps i love seeing the views and the downloads and so forth uh grow um and trying to think if there's anything else that i'm missing oh one more thing uh i posted earlier in the week um it was just uh friday morning thursday morning thursday morning about the watership down news watership down a new interpretation of it is coming to netflix and the bbc I talked, I did like a 20 minute YouTube exclusive video about it. Um, make sure you guys check it out if you guys had it. I know, but when you guys are listening to this, most of you by now have already heard the news. So, but if you want my my take on it, I am someone who watches, a lot, not watches a lot of movies and television, but I've gone to school for it. So I know how to at least look into it a little deeper, I guess. I'm not bragging or anything, but that kind of schooling does help for you to kind of study and look into films and, you know, certain trends and what's going on. So, um, again, look at, hop over to youtube.com, search bunnies and BZ cash. You'll see that it's literally called watership down coming to Netflix and BBC. Um, and make sure you guys check that again. It's like 20 minutes. Um, subscribe, download, and we got one more, uh, outro song for you guys at the close it out again this is clevin mcleod of incomptech.com a little bit different than the first one all right guys this is randy with bunnyzine.com and the bunnyzine bz cast i uh, thank you guys for listening you guys have a good day <laughs>